and welcome to a new episode of New Cars TV. I'm your host, Andre Clemente. Now, we all remember when the Privia disrupted the minivan field back in 91 with its unconventional drivetrain layout, as well as its best-in-class cargo space and flat floor capability, not to mention its styling. At a time when other car makers were churning out uninspiring people haulers in the shape of bricks, Toyota responded with an egg, and a damn good one. Things got even better in 1994 with the debut of the supercharged engine. At 201 foot-pounds of torque and 160 horsepower, the Privia became one of the most powerful minivans on the market. But remember, this van was designed and engineered in the 80s. So as we approach the 1996 model year, you have to wonder if the Privia is beginning to show its age. After all, the competition has had more than enough time to catch up. Ford's new Windstar, for example, is far cheaper and is now available with a 200 horsepower V6, still in the crown as the most powerful minivan. Not to mention, the second and third row seats are removable, allowing for a completely flat floor. That's a trait that only the Privia was known for up until now. Then there's the new luxurious Chrysler Town & Country LXI, which has better power, sliding doors on both sides, flat floor capability, and far more opulence and amenities for the same price as the loaded Privia. So the question is, at nearly $35,000 as tested, does anyone still care about this van? And does the mid-engine rear-wheel drive layout really make the Privia drive better than the competition? Or is that just a bunch of marketing hype from Toyota? We're gonna let the skid bad help us answer that last one. Coming up on this episode of New Cars TV, stick around. The whole point of the mid-engine layout is for the benefit of cargo space, not handling. And don't think the engine sits right in the middle because it doesn't. It's right here underneath the front seats. It's pretty brilliant, and if you're wondering why no one else thought of a layout like this, you're not alone. Legendary designer Giorgetto Gigiato told Auto Week himself, I've pushed for years the idea of fitting the engine underneath the seats in order to offer better use of the passenger compartment. From a design point of view, the preview looks very good. Now, lifting the driver's seat doesn't exactly give you a ton of access. It's mainly for checking dipsticks. The passenger seat will give you a better peek of the twin cam inline four. Toyota claims that the engine only needs to be accessed from above during oil changes and every 60,000 miles for platinum spark plugs. Now, if oil ever gets low, the engine simply draws more from the oil reservoir up front rather than having you lift the seat and do it manually yourself. Now don't go looking for a manual shifter anymore because it won't be there. When the supercharged engine arrived in 94, the 5-speed transmission was dropped so you could never option the two together. The Privia is automatic only from 1994 onwards. But don't be bummed. The supercharger is the best thing to happen to the Privia. I wouldn't even bother with a non-supercharged model, no matter how cheap they are in the used market. With 25% less torque trying to haul 3,800 pounds, that base version couldn't move out of its own way. Once you experience a supercharger, you'll understand why Toyota dropped the base engine and made the supercharged motor standard across the line. Now you might see captain's chairs in other minivans, but these are the only chairs on the market that can swivel 360 degrees in any direction, as well as recline and move forward and backward. They even have their own cup holders. It's a fun way to carry passengers and kids, but these chairs have one problem. They are not quick release. Not only are they a chore to unhitch, 
but they're extremely heavy, nearly 80 pounds each. Plus, they're a $900 option. So if you're someone who frequently requires a flat floor for hauling, you're better off getting a center bench. Not only is it lightweight, but it's easy for one person to remove in seconds. The real party trick, however, is in the rear. You see, the Ford and Chrysler vans have third row seats that can roll forward and backward depending on where you need the space. It's a pretty simple concept, but the problem is that it's still a one-piece bench. So when it comes time to remove it, you gotta lift out the whole thing, and that's a two-person job. Then you gotta find a place to store it, like the garage or the side of the house or your neighbor's lawn or something. It's pretty inconvenient. The Privia, on the other hand, is the only van in the market with a split third row that can fold up and out of the way. There's more space behind the third row than any other van on the market. Folding just one of the third row cushions lets you an extra 30 cubic feet. And folding both allows you to lay an eight foot by four foot piece of plywood completely flat on the floor where the center seat's removed. And yes, to be clear, you can remove these cushions for even more space along the sides. And while the competitor's third row seats can collapse forward, they're still tall and bulky. The previous third row can recline and fold completely flat. Same with the center bench seat and even these captain's chairs, creating a lounge or a small bed. You just can't do this with any other minivan. Bottom line, these third row seats are one of the most innovative features you'll find in today's minivans. In fact, since it debuted five years ago, no other minivan has offered anywhere near as much cargo space as the Privia. Unfortunately, the crown now goes to Chrysler, who just released long wheelbase versions of their vans that stretch a whole 13 inches longer than the short wheelbase Privia. But to show you just how effective the mid-engine layout is, the Privia only gives up nine, just nine cubic feet of space to the long wheelbase Chrysler. That's because the Chrysler still has an engine taking up valuable space in the front. So, pound for pound, the Privia is still the most space efficient minivan on the market. From the driver's seat, ergonomics are fantastic, and everything on this space age dash is simple to use and understand. It's still more stylish than what's found in the new American vans with their flat, square control panels and tiny buttons that force you to take your eyes off the road longer than you'd like. And yeah, those new vans offer more features, but they have nowhere near the build quality and fit and finish of this thing. Here you have tight, even gaps with smooth, soft touch panel textures. Even the rear interior panel is manufactured as a single piece instead of multiple sections to help minimize squeaks and rattles. And speaking of rattles, there are none. But enough of all that. It's time to make the tires squeal. Now, we all know this thing was never designed for aggressive driving, but we do want to know what it's like at the limit. Does it stay composed, or does it just become outright dangerous? You know, for science. So the mid-engine layout and the near 50-50 weight distribution might have a few small benefits here in the skid pad, but don't think for one minute it has sporty handling, even for a minivan. I mean, sure, it has low center of gravity and a low roll center, but it doesn't matter when the shocks are so soft. And there's no rear sway bar, so there's just tons of body roll. I will say, sitting right up against the nose makes it easy to place this thing exactly where you want to, and it responds well to quick directional changes. You can credit the mid-engine design for that one. You do get quite a bit of understeer in the small, tight corners, like here. But besides that, it doesn't understeer as much as other vans. Being rear-wheel drive does give this a bit of 
stability and balance that you just don't get in the newer front wheel drive minivans, which have all their weight in the front and nothing in the rear. It's a shame because this Privia and the Mazda MPV are the only two minivans left available in rear wheel drive. Now, the engine is tilted at a 75 degree angle, so it sits only 17 inches tall. Just 17. That gives it the relatively low center of gravity we were talking about, but it's not obvious from the driver's seat because the seating position is just so high. Remember, you are literally sitting on top of the engine, so it feels tall, and it is. Also, this has the optional ABS, which even at $1,400 is totally worth it. I wouldn't want my preview without it. Overall, I think you and your kids will appreciate how manageable this van is once you start pushing it. Although the one trait that really stands out, if I'm honest, is the steering. This has always had the best steering of any minivan. Only the new Grand Caravan can match the steering feel. All the other vans just feel either over-assisted, too vague, or too wallowy. The steering here is perfectly weighted, and it responds with this level of immediacy that you just don't expect in a minivan. Maybe it's because you don't have the weight of an engine hanging over the front wheels slowing you down. Now, we all want to pull long, magnificent drifts in this thing, but the reality is that there's no limited slip. So you have to rely on momentum if you even want to attempt to get it sideways. Right, we're drive fast, up to the corner, lift off, crank the wheel, don't tip over, gas, and repeat. The engine is just screaming. It doesn't even have a tack. You only get three gauges. Now, if you're gonna ask which minivan is the best handling on the market, just know that options like the Mazda MPV and Honda Odyssey are based on car platforms. So they naturally handle more like a car than the Privia does. The Odyssey is literally an Accord. It even has the Accord's double wishbone suspension. And the Mazda MPV has just always had the sportiest handling. However, those two vans aren't really competitors to this thing. They're too tiny. When it comes to full-size minivans, none could ever match the previous combination of cargo capacity and handling. That is, until now. The all-new, long wheelbase Grand Caravan ES. This is the first minivan to be offered with a factory performance handling package. Referred to as a touring package, this option gives buyers 16-inch wheels, a rear sway bar that nearly eliminates understeer, and firmer springs and damping rates that make the Grand Caravan corner much flatter than the Privia. We're talking 0.77G of grip on the skid pad, nearly on par with sports sedans like the Cadillac SDS. The Privia maxes out at just 0.70G. So with steering equally as good as the Privia's and with noticeably less body roll, the Grand Caravan ES steals the crown as the best handling full-size minivan. It's not perfect, considering it's front-wheel drive based. But in the end, the supercharged Privia has more than enough performance to meet buyer's needs. How it drives on the street, well, that's what really matters. grip to a few of the sportier vans it makes up for in ride comfort. If you've ever driven the Mazda MPV, for example, this ride's much nicer. I mean, it's no Lexus, but it's smooth and compliant. 
Although you do want to avoid harsh impacts because you get this loud, obnoxious shudder that goes throughout the body. The deep potholes make it easy to bottom out on the soft springs. But let's be honest, only the most sophisticated suspensions can match that stuff. When it comes to the minor imperfections, this van can mask it no problem, better than most minivans. And while all minivans are designed to feel effortless to drive, very few feel as light and nimble on their feet as the Privia. Toyota clearly put extra time and effort in proper street manners. And how about the little supercharger that could? over half throttle we begin to hear the whine of the supercharger. And a full throttle, the engine goes a bit bonkers. It's with just enough power to overtake and feel zippy around town, even with people and cargo in the back. You got torque down low where you need it, and cruising at 80 miles an hour is genuinely effortless. Now, we all know Toyota used a supercharger because they couldn't fit a bigger engine, but can't help but imagine how awesome this thing would be with an inline six, say from the Cressida or the NA Supra. I think we'd happily give up interior space for that. Now, being a mid-engine van, you're probably worried that the motor has to be dropped for regular maintenance or that it requires specialized technicians of service, but it doesn't. In fact, maintenance is much less complicated than you think. First of all, you don't have to worry about a timing belt because this thing's chain driven. And the passenger side engine cover gives you access to the spark plugs, valve cover, PCV valve, and more. Once the van's in the air, things like the cooling system hoses, distributor, and fuel filter are all easy access. And replacing the water pump is one of the simplest jobs on the planet. Even changing the supercharger oil, which Toyota specifies every three years, 30,000 miles, isn't difficult by any means. Other items like the air filter, battery, and brake reservoir are all easy to get to. Basically, any common maintenance job can be done by your local mechanic. One annoying job is the front shocks, which requires removing some lower dash panels in the glove box. But even worse is having to service the accessory drive shaft, which is one item that is unique to the Privia. To keep the engine compact, the accessories are mounted ahead of the motor near the nose of the car. An accessory drive shaft, known as SADS, connects accessories to the engine. This drive shaft uses rubber couplers on each end similar to the flex disc found in E30 BMWs. These are wear items, and replacing them is one job that will trip up your average mechanic. However, these would need to be replaced until like what, 150,000 miles? By the way, have you seen the engine bays in all these new front wheel drive minivans with their transverse V6 engines? To maximize interior space, the engine is pushed as far forward as possible, leaving very little room for service. It is so crammed that you can only access about half the engine from the top. And being front wheel drive, you have the transmission, the axles, the steering gear, all packed inside that compartment. Have fun reaching the back three spark plugs. Lastly, of the three companies, which one do you think has been the most dependable? Chrysler and Ford have consistently placed low on reliability over the past decade. Now, there is an elephant in the room, uh, and I'm not talking about this thing. I'm talking about safety. <laughs> to be honest, the Privy had a really strong start. In 1992, it was the first and only minivan to meet all passenger car safety standards. That's a big accomplishment. And prior to this year, the Privy did really well in all of its crash tests, scoring four out of five stars in the front driver's side impact with the NHSTA, who claimed that the Privy has, and I quote, low risk of injuries. Unfortunately, another organization, known as the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety, came up with an all-new moderate overlap crash test last year, and it's been testing vehicles ever since. 
Eventually, they got hold of the Privia and, well, the Privia totally bombed it. Basically, the steering wheel got pushed upward, smacking the dummy right in the face. And the seatbelt stitching, which was designed to tear in a certain way in a crash, tore too much, allowing the dummy to slide downwards and cripple its legs. Overall, it received a poor safety rating. You should know that because this is a new test, nearly half of all vehicles tested received either a poor or marginal safety rating, including the new Dodge Caravan. And to be fair, the preview was engineered and designed nearly 10 years before this test even existed. Plus, this style of crash only accounts for less than 10% of all crashes. But in the end, it doesn't matter because these results were heavily publicized. The media headlines alone nearly kill the previous reputation. Now we can try and list all the reasons why the Privia isn't selling well, but there's just no point. It doesn't share any platform or parts with any other Toyota. It's too expensive to build and sell. There are many drawbacks from a production standpoint. And Toyota knew all that when they put it into production. And that's because this van was an experiment for Toyota. You see, Lee Iacocca might have invented the minivan, but other car makers, like Toyota, were trying to perfect it. That meant they were experimenting with different designs and layouts, hence why all the minivans look so radically different from each other. The Privia happened to be the first one to set the bar high and excel in so many key areas. Its space efficiency and cargo capacity were miles better than anything else. From a functional standpoint, when it debuted in 1991, it was the most innovative and thoughtfully executed minivan this country had ever seen. Yes, it was expensive, a lot of people thought it was weird, it wasn't marketed very well, but the truth is, the Privia is the reason why the Grand Caravan is so good. You see, Chrysler has a history of milking as many years as possible out of successful products without much more than a few incremental improvements every now and then. I mean, sure, if there's no real competition, why change, right? But the Americans know what happens when you stay stagnant and leave the door open for outside competition. Toyota, Honda, Nissan were coming in and finding a big receptive audience because they were fuel efficient. Cleverly. The Privia was good enough to remind Chrysler and Ford that they need to keep innovating if they want to stay ahead of the Japanese. Because while the Privia is a sales flop, what's stopping its successor from doing substantially better? I mean, this is Toyota we're talking about here. They showed a lot of potential with the Privia and they're also responsible for one of the world's best-selling cars. So, anything's possible. While the Privia didn't sell as well, it beat the Caravan in nearly every measurable metric, except for things like engine power and price. Considering Dodge began developing today's Caravan back in 1991, you can absolutely bet the Privia played a key role in the Caravan's development. Don't believe me? Just look at it. How else do they go from a box to this. That's a nod to the Privia. Where else would they get that egg shape from? Hell, if the Privia was front engine, front wheel drive, the proportions would be nearly identical. So, the Privia may no longer be the best minivan, but it is, and always will be, the coolest.